Ah, <laughs> need now. What else, Stephanie? I have no time for makeup or lipstick or even um, anything this morning because I'm trying to study like crazy. I'm. I'm. I don't have any stakes with taking my HSK2 test on Sunday. It is currently Thursday. What time of day is it even? I can't check the time when I'm recording. Serious flaw, Samsung. Um, I don't know what time it is. It's probably, oh, here it is, 11 o'clock in the morning. And I woke up stressed out. I have the next three days off of work, which is wonderful and strategic. Um, but there are no stakes with doing this test on Sunday. None. I, I can't get a job with HSK2. I can't read with HSK2. I can't function with HSK2. There's nothing with the certificate that warrants the level of stress that my brain is currently under. And yet, I had a level of stress when I woke up this morning. So I did the only thing I could do. I went online and bought an espresso machine because my recent one broke. And I keep buying coffees, which are like almost for a little over $4 each, which is ridiculous because I don't even need that much coffee. I love espresso. So that was my first distraction. My second distraction is returning the whiteboard because it just didn't work very well. I couldn't, um, I couldn't write on it. It was a fun idea, but the actual equipment itself didn't work and there's no point in, um, in keeping a system that doesn't work. So I started to do life stuff and I realized I took these few days off of work to study, not to deal with life stuff. Life stuff can happen anytime. I don't really need to have a lot of mental power uh, when I do that stuff, but I do need a lot of mental power when I do this stuff. So I dug deep into my brain for motivation on how to organize my thoughts on what to do in the next three days to prepare, but not over prepare and not cram and not stress myself out. So I took out my timer, my kitchen timer, and I set it for 30 minutes. And I said, okay, I'm gonna sit down and I'm going to just start from chapter one and I'm gonna review the listening. I'm just going to start doing something. Because this is after an hour of procrastination, uh, partially waiting for my coffee to arrive, partially just terrified that I didn't know how to begin reviewing. Reviewing for a language test, I find, is very difficult. More so the second language test than the first language test because there's all this stuff in the first uh, in the first uh, vocabulary and grammar from the first test that I could have forgotten by now. So I'm sort of perplexed by how to review for a language test. So I, I just said, do something. Just do something for 30 minutes and organization will come to me. I'm a somewhat organized person and once I start doing something, once I start doing an actual task, not only will I be doing that task, but I'll start to think of other things to do. So I sat down, after an hour of procrastination, I sat down for half an hour and I finished it. I just finished my half hour. Actually, I went 15 minutes past the half hour, which is the beauty of timing yourself with tasks because if you're like me, once you start, you'll actually go longer than the task or longer than the time that you allotted because you'll start to get into it. But it's that initial start, especially when you're stressed out like I am right now. I wouldn't say stressed out, especially when you're under a little bit of self-pressure. Um, it's a good way to distract yourself. Just start doing something within a time period and then eventually you'll forget that the time period even exists. When the buzzer went off, I was like, shut up, I'm doing listening. I can't listen to an alarm. So I, in that half hour, in addition to doing uh, chapter one again, because there's 15 chapters in my HSK2 book, I also started a few lists because that's how I relax. My chapter review list, which actually I can cross off chapter one, so 15 chapters, I'm going to review on some level all of the chapters. That's what I'm comfortable with. Uh, it could be anything from what I did with chapter one, which I'll tell you in a minute. And this is not going to be a five minute video, this is going to be way longer. Um, or it could be uh, like chapter 15, oh there's not 20 chapters, that's HSK3. This just got a lot shorter. Sorry, there's only 15 chapters in HSK2. So chapters 14 and 15 I've done in the last week. So there's very little to do with those except just look over some of the vocabulary. So that's actually really short. I can probably do both of those within an hour and still do a little bit of like uh, HSK dancing, which I do to move my arms around and, and, and pretend like I am an active human being physically. Um, <laughs> 
so that's not that bad. So essentially it's 13, <clears throat> 13 chapters I need to review on some level. I also made a supplementary vocabulary list. Now it doesn't look like much of a list now, but I've noticed there's some vocabulary that I've been ignoring that's used in the reading and listening, but is not part of the core 300 HSK2 vocabulary, but I'm noticing it come up in the listening and reading. So I wanna actually make a list as I'm going through the chapters of that vocabulary. If I have time, I want to make flashcards of them because the fact that they're used but they're not in the core vocabulary, I feel like they should be part of my Leitner box. So I'll, I want to make this list first because I want to see how many there are. They might be extremely supplementary or they might actually be very useful. So once I make the list, by the time I get to, again, I keep writing 20 chapters. There's only 20, 15. Once I get to the end of chapter 15, I'll see how big the list is and I'll see what to do with them. But in each chapter, it's part of my list is to look at the vocabulary, is there anything I want to add to my Lightner box? Because I'm out of new cards. I have been for the past week or so, and I'm not starting HSK3 vocabulary until after HSK2 test on Sunday. So I can add some new cards to there to spice up level one. <laughs> and then my last list, did I mention I would work in lists, are the different tasks I can do over the next few days uh, and the time period that I have. I don't want to spend an excessive amount of time because language learning is a slow build up. It's not a cram. I don't want to trick my way into the test. I'm using the test as an external deadline to motivate me to do the other things that build up the vocabulary. I'm really, really, truly using the HSK test as a way to build up vocabulary for the entire year of 2018. Uh, and I'll talk all about grammar and why I'm basically ignoring it, except for on an organic trend level in a later video. That's an entire other video that I have planned sometime in the next few days. But I think doubling my time over the next few days and doing four hours instead of two is realistic because it's a lot of review. So it's not as intense as the first time looking at a chapter for two hours. So I think four hours is fine. And I've got the day, a few days off so I could do like two hour chunks. I'm doing two hours this morning before an appointment that I have, and I'm going to do two hours tonight. The husband is away on vac on uh, not vacation, Aha! is away on business. So this actually works out really well because my normal distraction of his wonderfulness is not here. So I'll come home tonight after my appointment and I will have nothing left except the mess that I have made of uh, all this stuff that, um... should I show you my mess? I should show you my mess. So I've got, I don't know if you can see this, where is my hand? I've got my Lightner box here, I've got the stopwatch, or no, the timer cards for if I decide to make cards, uh, level one cards that I have to review, the general vocab list for HSK2, uh, a blank sheet of paper so I can write down things that come up, uh, life things that come up that I don't want to do but that I don't want to forget. Uh, oh, and then I've got all of my lists chapter, the tablet where I'm looking at, or I'm listening to the, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, the, the listening, and then my coffee, which fuels my coffee dense, which is coffee and confidence blend that needs to exist. More people need to say coffee dense. My linguistics teacher in grad school, first round of grad school, uh, told me that one. It was probably the most useful thing I learned in that class. I don't like linguistics classes. I love languages. I love talking about and analyzing languages. I do not like the step that linguists take, generally speaking, when they analyze languages in a way that I don't like. There's nothing wrong with linguists. I have some favorite linguists. I don't like linguistic classes. Rant over. Okay, so I've got basically four hours today, four hours Friday, four hours Saturday. I did not total that up, but we know, because we're good at math, that that's 12 hours in total. Oh, which coinky dink, I have about 12 chapters. So here's what I've decided. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight possible tasks. One, review the practice test reading. <clears throat> oh yeah, I did a practice test the other day that I got a 64% on. The reading was ridiculously low. There was one exercise where I got zero out of five. So I had my, um, I printed it out and I have the answer key and I'm going to sit down and see why I messed up. Was it a vocabulary issue 
Was it some other issue? Blah, blah, blah. So I do want to spend time on that. Collect vocab from chapters. That's what I'm doing here as a supplementary vocabulary list. So I'm doing that as I'm reviewing the chapters. Three is do another practice test. I don't really foresee that happening. And I've already done two practice tests. So I feel like I'm comfortable with the kinds of sections on the test, but I don't feel like I really need to do another test. I think it's much more worth my while to focus on the vocabulary and being able to hear the vocabulary and the listening than it is to do another test. Practice tests really are to get used to the format and the kinds of things that you'll be hearing and reading and so that you don't stress out over the, um, the uh, over what's happening um, so you know the, the, the test itself. So I'm actually going to cross that off because I don't think that's a productive use of time. I've done two practice tests. Um, uh, finish all workbook tasks. That's actually included in, so I made this task list before I actually dug into chapter one. So it's interesting how much of this ended up being in that list. So after this list, I'll tell you that list. <laughs> I love lists. If I could have a job where I just made lists, I think that would be the ultimate best job for that part of my brain. Not the creative part, but the other part, <clears throat> whatever that part is called. That could be the organized part that doesn't really take over the creative. Anyway, um, blah, blah, blah. So what was that? One, two, three, four, but we killed number three, so five. Transcript review. So I printed out the transcripts and I've got question marks all over, as you can see on chapter one. I've still got question marks there. So I'm actually, when I'm doing, oh, I'll talk about that later. Anyway, six, flashcard activity. I don't know what that is yet. I want to see what happens after I review all of this, what I need to do to get the last bits of vocab in my head. So I'll make up some activity from my teaching days. Listening and the inferences that I've been generally ignoring until I got to, the inference activity that I've got ignored until I got to about chapter 13 or 14. So that was my initial brainstorm of tasks. What I ended up doing is uh, to, during that half hour, I did chapter one. I did all of the things that felt like I organically needed to do in chapter one. And it fell into one, two, three, four, five tasks. So pretty much all the tasks that felt important, <clears throat> except for the flashcard activity from the initial task list fell into the chapter review task list. So actually, I'm going to kill this initial list because <laughs> lists are made to be wrote, written all, wrote, wrote all over. Language erosion is real. Language erosion, which is not easy to say without finishing my coffee. There, I'm better. Okay. So now I just have the chapter review list and flashcards. Very doable. Thir 12 chapters, which is a little challenging. It's a lot of brain power, but again, it's review. So it shouldn't be too taxing. I should be noticing the things that tripped me up the first time and try to reconcile those so they don't trip me up the next time. Chapter review, one, two, three, four, five, one. Review vocab in uh, course book. So I have torn up the chapters. Uh, here's the course book. It's the colorful pages. And then the workbook, which is the thing that I really, really learned from, is the black, or the black and white pages. So I go through the course book and I look at the pictures. Do I know the vocabulary in those pictures? They also have vocab areas broken out here. Do I have those? Uh, if it's not already in my flashcards, I put it on the supplemental vocabulary list and I will deal with that when I'm done with all the chapters. So I go through and I look at all of those. I'm not really doing, they have a lot of different breakout conversations. I'm not doing those now. I'm going to come back to those post HSK2. There's a lot of grammar information. I'm not doing those now. I'll talk about that in another video. And so I go through and I'm basically looking for vocabulary I don't know. And I will assess how useful that is. So that's basically what I'm doing with the course book. Then I go into number two. I do the full listening, which is part one, part two, and part three. And I do it again. Again, I put dates on when I'm doing the activities so I can see, hopefully, the progress I'm making with how many I've gotten wrong the first time versus second time. Um, in chapter one, on May 7th, I did this for the first time for chapter one, and I got five out of five. It's hard to improve on that. But on this one, 
I generally got five out of five, but the last one was a difficult picture. Oh no, I confused. Yondong I thought was swimming, but it's actually sports, so I actually got four out of five. So that one went down. But generally speaking, the listening, uh, the first time that I did it felt really hard. Did I leave any messages? Oh, I did on April 24th. On April 24th, I actually wrote down, I can't understand much. And today, easy peasy. It really, I could, I feel like I understood 90 to 95% of the words that were in there. And I definitely understood what was happening. I wasn't unsure if it was correct or incorrect, except for that one word. So that was really nice. April 24th, today is June, I think it's June 7th. It's either June 7th or June 8th. What does my tablet say? My tablet says, no, you don't know how to use me up because you're four days old. Anyway, um, I don't know. It's probably June 7th. <clears throat> so that's a really nice progress from April 24th to June 7th. I really like that. Okay. And that's with listening, which is super hard for me. So yay. The second one, I got the same two wrong. And I'm going to dig into those. I dug into it a little bit. They're both travel related, and I think it's a difference in prepositions. So I'm going to dig into that some more when I review. And so I made a note, review 8 and 10. So I'm putting like big, big notes on the top here. If I do a final review the morning of, probably not, the day before, probably, I'll look at just one or two things per chapter. In part three, <clears throat> on April 24th, I actually was moving so fast through the chapters that I didn't even check my answers until today, but I got two out of five. Wow. On May 5th, I did it again, probably because I felt so defeatist, and I got four out of five. Better. Today, I also got four out of five, and I'm not entirely sure, but I think the answer in the workbook does not match the answer in the transcript, which is what's in the audio word for word because I can understand the words that are in there. So this may be a book error, but I'm going to come back and review it anyway. The main thing is I understand what's happening in there, which is pretty exciting because end of April versus early June, that's a short time frame. I'm really excited because by the time I hit chapters 14 and 15, I felt really lost in some of, in some of, some of the, um, the listening. So it's really nice to hear this stuff and understand what's happening. <clears throat> so then I went to the reading section still in chapter one and I looked at, I tend to block off or circle words that I don't know. And I like to, once I know them now, I like to erase them. So I know the ones that I know and I erased a lot. I have my click eraser specifically just to do that. So that's why I do that in pencil. So yeah, so I go through and again, I'm looking for vocabulary. I'm looking for ones that I circled, not knowing and I, and, uh, and erasing them or keeping them or looking them up again, which Pleco is my friend. I love that app. I also have the inferences. So that's the next one is, um, reading review keywords and pictures. And the next one is do inferences, so that's number five. So the inference page, again, they've got sentences, two sentences together, and then they've got an assumption or an inference, and you're supposed to say whether it is true or not. That was a little taxing mentally, because I, for some reason I don't like this. I like matching pictures better at this point with my vocabulary level, but it does get me to read I should probably cover the pinion when I'm doing these, but right now I'm just trying to push through all the chapters to make it to Sunday. So I'll deal with this. I'll be reading enough Hansa in HSK3 because there's no more pinion. Yay! So basically I did the inferences. I got five out of five in chapter one, which feels pretty satisfying. And then in chapter in the next reading, again, I'm just looking for vocabulary. And then the rest of it is... Uh, is not important right now. So I've, for every chapter, I'm going to try, try to do, I'm going to try to do five things. Review vocabulary in the course book, do the full listening, uh, take notes on things to review for later. I might look at them on Saturday and try to figure out why I got them wrong. Um, I am sort of dipping into the, the, the transcript as I do it too, in case there's a specific word I don't know, I'm dipping into that because I can't put it on the vocabulary unless I know what the word is. And so I need the listening, the sound, and the transcript, because the transcript 
transcript is only in Hansa characters. Um, I need both of those in order to look it up in Pleco to know, put it on my list. <sighs> Chinese is hard, y'all. Four is reading, uh, review the keywords in the pictures, and then do the inferences as number five. So I'm trying to do those in, um, in that. So to motivate myself, I've got the checklist. When I do all those five things, I cross off the chapter. So I'll let you know how that goes as time goes on in these next three days. Um, the, another important thing is to schedule fun. <laughs> I kid you not, I used to tell my students this all the time when I was teaching language, is when they were preparing for a test, I was like, don't forget to one, sleep, two, eat something so you have the brain power. Don't eat something really heavy, but eat something so you're not hungry during the test. For me, coffee. I'm going to the test, I'm leaving for the test area about two hours before the test, one hour to make sure I get there. Uh, I don't need an hour, but you never know. And one hour to get a coffee and listen to some of the language before I go into the test. It seemed to work really well last time to listen to a full listening. It doesn't matter what chapter, but just to listen to a full listening, not to do the activity, but just to start hearing the rhythm of the language before walking into the test. So I'm gonna leave two hours before the test. My test is at 9 a.m., meh. But for the next three days, I'm still scheduling fun things to go do in life <laughs> so that I keep the stress level down. And that's really important is, uh, yes, I am doubling my study time for three days, but I'm not spending like 10 hours a day and I'm not stressing myself out and I'm not, oh, okay, I'm a tiny bit, but I'm still doing things like, what are some of the things? Oh yeah. Um, I have a book club on Saturday. I possibly have a brunch on Saturday. Um, I have, um, I probably have a haircut tomorrow facial because summer is wreaking havoc on my face. I don't want to do that. Anyway, um, so I've got little things like that. I want to check out a Pilates class I've been meaning to check out and there's a new bookstore I want to go to. So there's there's different things I'm, I'm scheduling into my day so that I can do things that remind me why I'm studying a language and just, you know, keep a full bodied approach to life and not just not just get lost in the process. Uh, I'm studying this language because I want to get deeper into uh, the viewpoints within the culture and so I can read in different cultures, if that makes sense. So there's no point in doing that without being out in the culture in China and Shanghai where I am and experiencing some of that as I do these things, which don't sound very cultural, but they're still part of where I am and what I'm doing. So, <sighs> um I have some other fun things that I wrote down that I don't even remember, uh, but I scheduled them into the day. So it's important to study, but it's also important to live. Um, language is not something you can cram into your brain, and that's something that I used to tell my students, but I forget sometimes when I plan. Um, but I don't actually do it. It's just I think, oh, I can spend, you know, all day sitting in a coffee shop studying, and then after about two hours, my brain just stops. So I think four hours, two and two, when I have the day off is manageable. Again, it's a review. So I think this is possible. We'll see how it goes. It's now Thursday at a, a, almost 11.30. I have to be out of here at 2.30. So I'm hoping to get through conceivably chapter two because I still have to get ready to go and pack up the stuff I'm going to do in a coffee shop later today. So I think I can get through at least chapter two, maybe three, but that might be a bit ambitious. But if I do chapters one, two, three, and four, one and two this morning, three and four tonight, um, then that's four chapters a day out of 12. I probably need to do a little more. Um, but anyway, the first chapter, I was making all these notes, so it won't take me as long. That took about 45 minutes to do all of those five things, but I was also setting up the infrastructure of the review. So I think the other ones will be quicker. And again, the later chapters I've, I've actually done most recently, so the review for those should be super fast. All right, so uh, clearly this is not a five minute June video, but it was something I needed to talk about. Um, Cause I think it's very confusing on how to review for a language test. And I'm not even sure this is the best way to do it, but I think this is the best way to do it for me 
is I need to know that I've touched everything within a few days before the test. Not to intensely go through everything fine tooth with a fine tooth comb, <laughs> can't speak, but to, to have looked at everything again before the test. Uh, I'm not going to dive into the HSK-1 stuff because that's another 15 chapters of stuff. I'm just going to assume that if I can do the HSK-2 stuff that has some HSK-1 stuff in it, a lot of it probably, um, and we'll just go from there. I think this will get increasingly harder to review as I go up the HSK um, level, so I don't really know what I'm going to do for 3 and 4, but that's far in the future. Right now, I think this plan, it makes me feel very comfortable and I feel much less stressed than I was two hours ago when I woke up and was like trying to do everything except study because I was so stressed out on how to start. How do you plan for a language test? Um, how do you plan just review for a language? If you're going through a course book, how do you, when you get to the end of it or when you get to certain points of it, how do you review? What do you do to review? I'm very curious what other folks do. I've never self-studied a language before in a methodical way. I've done Duolingo and I've tried to do tutors and I've tried to put all of the um, planning into teachers' hands before in different classroom settings and none of that's really worked. So for me, for my language learning brain, so I'm trying this route. But I'd be very curious what works for you. I don't think there's one way that works for everybody, but I'm very, very curious what the different ways are. So if you have the time to share, leave it down in the message below, in the comment section below. All right, on to chapter two. I am very motivated by crossing things off of a list, so I really want to get chapter two down after I have my breakfast. Okay, Satyan.